Alright guys, yeah, I had to get a different tank top on. That one was completely wet with sweat and it was really gross. And there's a bug under my computer! Oh, it's... Grr, I hate them bugs. Can't wait to get on the property for that reason. One of the reasons. Alright, this one is on storing canned goods. Alright. Jars should be stored in a dark place that will not reach temperatures higher than 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is why the basement in Michigan is perfect for that. And on the property, we definitely need a root cellar. So the following spring, we might have to try to connect with people in the fall who have the resources to help us get a root cellar dug. <clears throat> There won't be room in the storm shelter. The storm shelters aren't big enough. So, Jars kept in this manner can be kept for at least a year without impacting food quality or nutrition. Lids should be marked with a canning date, stickers, sharpies, any method. It's also a good idea to label the contents of jars, especially those containing meat, stews, soups, jellies, jams, and preserves, any food that cannot be identified at a glance. Jars can be stacked, but does not increase the risk of damage to the lids. But it does increase the risk of damage to the lids, I'm sorry. Any jars with damaged lids, broken seals, or cracked glass should be emptied and discarded. Jars with mold or visible growth can be di should be discarded. Jars with rusted lids should be carefully inspected for leaks or broken seals before consuming. If you ever have any doubt about the safety of your food, discard it. And remember, you can... Add, you can if you have to discard any of your stores of food, you can add it to your compost. Because that way it technically doesn't go to waste. Top 5 canning mistakes. Have you ever gotten your hand on a perfect crop of green beans, decided to can them, then spent hours of work dealing with jars and lids, only to have it turn into a big, soggy, cloudy mess? So, have we. We asked Robin Seats, a canning expert and former extension agent with the North Carolina State University Onslow County Center about the most common mistakes she's seen in home canning. As the go-to guru for canning in Onslow County, she fielded calls all season and helped people work through common issues. And here are her top five canning mistakes from her years of experience. Number one, processing low-acid foods in a boiling water bath. This is the most common error. Robin C this is the most common error Robin sees. Home canners will use a water bath canner and try to can low acid foods. This is a problem. Not only can you wind up with a soggy, unappetizing mess instead of pristine jars of delicious food, you can actually cause undue harm. The temperature in a water bath doesn't get high enough to kill the bacteria you're trying to kill, Robin explained. Sure, you may have done it. Sure, it may not have killed you, but that just means you got lucky. Try not to tempt fate again. Number two, being in a hurry. If you've spent hours, sometimes days, or even weeks canning the latest crop of potatoes from your garden or your local farmer's market, then you're probably guilty of this one. You look at all the time you have left for that pressure canner to cool and then decide to speed up the process since you've gotten th got things to do. Maybe you have to pick up the kids from school. Maybe you have to sew a Halloween costume. Maybe you volunteered to help at your church's bake sale. So you take the canner and drop it into an ice bath or put it on the porch so the wind will cool it down a few minutes faster. What's the harm? Plenty. Cooling your product down too fast results in a rapid pressure drop which messes with the quality of your jars or potatoes or carrots or whatever. Robin said if you don't let the pressure drop naturally, you'll get evaporation. That means you'll lose liquid in the jar, and instead of full jars of delicious potatoes, you'll have some jars, and sometimes a lot of them, that are suddenly half full of product, exposing your veggies to unwanted air. When it isn't a safety, while it isn't a safety issue, pressure canners do a great job. A great job do a great job of killing bacteria. If it, mean, it means the results will be less than appetizing. So take your time and work on the sewing projects in between batches. It's worth the effort. Number three, 
not taking out the air bubbles. There's a little device that comes with the canning tool sets. It's usually just a simple plastic stick, but it can make all the difference. Well, excuse me. When dealing with chunky vegetables, large air pockets can get stuck at the bottom of the jars. You think, no harm done, that'll come out in the process. And it does, but those air pockets can be quite large, which means when you pull those jars out of the pressure canner, those bubbles have risen to the top, resulting in a big drop in liquid levels. Robin said, you think my liquid cooked away, but it didn't. To deal with this issue, take the little plastic stick or a clean spoon, a butter knife, or a popsicle stick, and pop those suckers. It's kind of satisfying. Number four, packing the jars too tightly. At the end of every canning process, you'll have a handful of veggies that just won't quite fill up a jar. So you think, well, I'll just cram them in the top of another jar. That's problematic. The extra product takes up space and while the half inch or so of empty space between the contents of the jar and lid may not seem like a big deal that space is crucial it prevents moisture from degrading the seal of the jar packing too many veggies in that seal can become compromised that means in the winter time when you're looking forward to that nice jar of green beans in the cupboard you'll get a mushy mess instead so take those extra green beans or whatever and throw them in a cast iron skillet with some olive oil and minced garlic. Don't use olive oil. Use cooking oil. Or cooking oil. I am so sorry. Use coconut oil. I've done that a few times. Coconut oil, not cooking oil. Bleh, don't use that stuff. Vegetable oil. Bleh, bleh. That stuff isn't fit for man or beast. and minced garlic that you grew yourself, and have a little snack instead. You deserve it. Five, reusing lids. With a few exceptions, canning lids are one and done. That means no matter how good a lid looks after using it, don't use it again. A lot of people don't realize not to do that, Robin noted. The rubber seals on canning lids develops tears and fissures during the first use. Sometimes the tears are microscopic, meaning the seal will look pristine to the naked eye, but still unable to hold the seal. Sometimes the heat from the canning process can close the tears up, which means the jar will seal at first, but as soon as the jar cools enough, it will open up, leading to air and bacteria exposure, so don't reuse your lids. Okay, I actually have not had that happen, and I don't think my mom did either, but I'll be vigilant. The most important tip from Robin is the simplest. If it doesn't look right, if it doesn't smell right, don't eat it. Happy canning. And if it doesn't, then compost it. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. And be sure to avoid these top five canning mistakes when preserving the fruits of your harvest. And there's a good picture for you. There we go. And the next chapter is uh, chapter 16 on dairy, milk, and more. So. All right, guys. So, ah, uh, oh, my nose, my sinuses. All right. So, all right. We are, if any of you guys are new to the channel, and I know I have a few new subscribers, I don't know how many videos you guys have gone through. We are Faith First Farm and Homestead. Things have changed since I did my live video. We do not have the 12.53 acres anymore. We have 5.41 acres. Sorry, my foot is bugging me. Anyway, we have 5.41 acres down here in Oklahoma. It's about four hours away from where we are right now. We just switched last month due to roads. And when I do get a vehicle, I don't want to have to make monthly repairs on that vehicle due to bad roads just getting to and from the property. Because the roads up around the 12.53 acres on Stone Creek, that property was amazing. And yes, there were the fruit trees on it. I offered Sandy and Jason, told them, go over there, dig up the fruit trees, plant, plant them on your property. We are going to get some more fruit trees, okay? 
Um, I'm going to be talking to Elaine when she comes down, since I do have the time off, uh, to go out to our property. And I'm going to have to call probably by Monday and get the address. Yeah. Anyway. But I'm going to talk to Elaine and see if she'd be willing to take us out there since she wants to help us out on the Memorial Garden. Um, anyway. Again, I haven't been out to that property yet. I do have a video where I showed the pictures of the property. It looks really nice. There is a year-round stream on the property. The roads, there's two ro two main roads. They're both county roads. There's power lines on both roads. Now, instead of building our cabins, because we don't have the forest and the trees, you know, the woods around us, which kind of sucks, but oh. we are going to go through the probably the Ron's Building Company. And we're going to get the, like, rent-to-own shed cabin buildings. Now, we, me, Scott, and Chloe, we are going to go in on a one of the biggest, the biggest one they offer, which is 14 by 42. And it's actually pretty nice. And the cool thing is, what we decided to do with ours, we're going to, ours, we're going to do purple. Purple with the red trim. I think red trim. Hang on. I'll pull up my pictures and I'll show you guys. Here's the boiling water. Just up a taste. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Purple with royal blue trim. I apologize. This is what we're going to have for ours. And, I, and we're going to do the, basically the barn-shaped shed, cabin shed, whatever. So that's the side of it. And the shutters are green. The trim is royal blue. The roof is what's red. So we have the red, the purple, and the actual building is going to be purple. Why? Because we're using face first colors. So. So our house is going to have the blue, the trim, the purple, which is going to be the outside of our house. The green, which is the shutters. And the red, which is going to be the roof. I haven't worked in orange. That's probably going to be in, like, flowers and stuff. I would like to, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, we're, like, working on our uh, financial situation. Because I would love to... I, w I would like to get one of their studio type buildings, okay, and use the ocean blue That's what the side of it looks like. The back of it. But this, I think I've got red on that roof too. But this I want to use for our outdoor kitchen. And the front, the door is cool because that uh, would have an all glass front. So. That is what I want to do with that. 
but I'm, I'm going to be working in Faith First colors on our buildings. Andrew wants to do blue for his. So there's going to be three buildings. Those three buildings on the property. So I'm going to have to try to figure out. And I'm working to get the money for a computer. For the computer that I've been looking at. So I can get my work from home job. job. And me and Scott and Chloe are all going to have to have work from home jobs. And Andrew is probably going to be leaning that direction as well. But I figure if we can all get work from home jobs, even making $15 an hour a piece, working 40 hours, well, me and Scott working 40 hours a piece at even $15 an hour, that's... That's six hundred dollars a week. So between the two of us, that'd be twelve hundred dollars a week. So you know we should be able to afford the payments on those, no problem. So anyway, but that's what we're working towards. And our aim, we're we're going to be moving out there in October. So we've got we're trying to get all this stuff figured out and done before that. And so. And I still have to get the income taxes taken care of. I just have not had the $150 to spare to get it taken care of. So, try to get that done this week. I was going to try pull, to pull 75 out, but I don't have it. So, and um, I have to try to take care of that Thursday. Trying to get all the money together for the pro the first property payment on that property it's just it's been a financial nightmare right now but anyway we'll get it figured out and you know god is good and he has provided up to this point and he will continue to do so but i'm gonna go ahead and get off from here and i'm gonna get this uploaded and i will see you guys in the next video and remember to check your subscriptions you guys make sure you're still subscribed if you're not Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and click on all, and I will see you guys in a little bit. Bye, guys.